In this video, we're going to introduce L'Hopital's rule, which is a handy application of differential calculus towards the problem of evaluating certain so-called indeterminate forms. So let's just take uh, a look at the kind of problem we'll be dealing with. Suppose you wish to evaluate the limit as x approaches a of f of x over g of x. Now, your instinct might be telling you, don't we have a limit law for this? Isn't the limit of a quotient the quotient of the limits? Well, yes to a point. So let's remember what the hypotheses are that have to be in place to make such an assertion. Both of these limits need to exist on their own. And of course, the limit of the denominator function cannot be zero. In that case, then you have the classic limit law for quotients. And even if the limiting value of the denominator is zero, there's still a chance you can say something useful. So if the numerator function has a non-zero limit, in this case, then you know that the limit of the quotient is going to diverge to infinity or negative infinity. And the sign here depends on how g tends to zero. In other words, depends on whether the values of g go to zero through positive or negative values. And by the way, there's a pathological other option, which is that the values of g hit zero infinitely often as x approaches a, in which case the limit of the quotient would fail to exist in a rather pathological way. We're not going to deal with that, obviously. So uh, the final case here, sort of the most interesting and critical case, is what happens when your numerator and denominator functions both have limit zero? This is the so-called zero over zero indeterminate form. And the answer to that question is we have no idea. Unless you do further work to analyze that limit, the answer could be any number of things, as we shall see in a moment with three different examples. And by the way, there's another indeterminate form where the numerator and denominator both diverge either to positive or negative infinity in any combination. That also is an indeterminate form. We call that the infinity over infinity form. So here we have the limit law for quotients, what we might call the extended limit law for quotients, and then the case of most interest to us right now, the indeterminate form. So let's look at three examples. We're not going to derive the limits. We're just going to show a graph and assert them. Then we'll revisit them in light of the new L'Hopital's rule that we're about to learn, and we're going to see how to make short work of each of them. So example A, the limit as x approaches 0 of sine x over x. Let's just check that this is really a 0 over 0 form. The limit of the numerator and denominator functions both equals 0 as x approaches 0. And if we looked at a graph of sine x over x, we would see that the limiting value appears to be 1. Now, if this looks familiar to you, you've probably seen it. In fact, you've probably worked through a geometric argument as to why this limiting value has to be 1. This limit is required when you learn what the derivative of the function sine has to be. It's very likely that you've evaluated this limit with methods that will have nothing to do with L'Hopital's rule. Example B tan x over x cubed. Once again, we're going to check that the limiting value as x approaches 0 of both the numerator and the denominator are 0, so that we have a 0 over 0 form. And in this case, we'll notice that the limiting value as x approaches 0 is infinity. In other words, this limit diverges to infinity. Example c, x squared over e to the x minus 1. We're going to look at the limit of this as x approaches 0. As in the previous two cases, we've got both the numerator and the denominator having values, limiting values of 0 as we approach the origin. And in this case, the limit of the quotient, this has a limiting value of 0. Now, each of these three examples, you can plot them graphically. You can get a sense of what these limiting values should be. What you can't do in any of these cases is use simple algebra to simplify the limits. You're really stymied. We've seen limits before where you can do some factorization, cancel out like terms, and then recover a new limit that can be evaluated using limit laws. But you have the impression that the numerator and the denominator functions in these cases aren't really mixing very well. We're not going to be able to factor one and cancel like terms. It's, it, we're really stuck unless we have a new method for dealing with them.
And that's where L'Hopital's rule comes in. So let's just state L'Hopital's rule. Suppose that either the limiting value of f and g as you approach an argument a are both zero, or they both diverge either to positive or negative infinity, any four combinations will work. Then, if the limit of the ratio of the derivatives happens to be L, that would imply that the limit of the original quotient must also be L. Now, why on earth would this be true? Well, we're not going to provide a proof, but in a moment we'll discuss why it's plausible. But right now, let's just try to get a handle on what's going on by paraphrasing roughly like this. If you are having trouble evaluating an indeterminate form, try evaluating the limit of the ratio of the derivatives instead. If you have success there, then you'll be able to know what the original limiting value must be. And by the way, we're talking about the ratio of the derivatives and not the derivative of the ratio. The derivative of the ratio, that's just an application of the quotient rule. We're not taking the derivative of the whole function. What we're doing is taking the derivative of the numerator and denominator independently and assembling them into a new ratio. Now this rule actually has um, a couple more statements we can add. When the limiting value of the ratio of derivatives diverge to either positive or negative infinity, that implies that the original limit must also have exactly that same behavior. Let's try paraphrasing one more time. If you're working on an indeterminate form, then if the limit of the ratio of the derivative can be evaluated, it follows that the limit of the original ratio must match the limiting value of the ratio of the derivatives. Let's revisit the three examples we saw earlier in light of L'Hopital's rule. So this is in fact what we would call a zero over zero form. L'Hopital's rule applies. We take the derivative of the numerator and denominator and assemble them into a new limit which can easily be evaluated using good old limit laws because the limiting value of cosine as x approaches 0 is 1. So this limiting value is 1 matches what we saw previously. Tan x over x cubed. We verified that this is a 0 over 0 form. So L'Hopital's rule is available to us. The new limit we get is secant squared over 3x squared as x approaches 0. Now we'll notice that the numerator function goes to 1, meanwhile the denominator function goes to 0, passing through positive values, and therefore this limit diverges to infinity, once again matching what we saw previously. And the third example, x squared over e to the x minus 1, limiting values x approaches 0, is in fact a 0 over 0 form. L'Hopital's rule gives us this new limit, 2x over e to the x. As x approaches 0, the numerator goes to 0, while the denominator goes to 1. So classic limit law kicks in. That limiting value is 0, once again, in agreement with what we saw earlier. Why does L'Hopital's rule work? Well, that's a great question. And what follows is not a proof, but rather an exploration of a special case. So we're not going to be able to answer this first question but we can at least take a stab at this question. Why is L'Hopital's rule plausible? Suppose that f and g both have values 0 at the origin and both have derivatives that are continuous at the origin. So let's just be clear that this second statement here uh, is a uh, much more restrictive than the hypothesis that comes into L'Hopital's rule usually. We're, making, we're looking at a more specific case, and even then, we're not going to be able to come up with anything near a proof. We're just going to be able to sort of understand why the limiting value of the ratio of the functions should have some relationship to the limiting value of the ratio of the corresponding derivatives. So let's look at the tangent slopes at the origin. 
we can write these slopes out as f prime of zero and g prime of zero. And if we zoom in near the origin then, we see that both functions f and g can be written in a very simple approximated form for x close to zero, f of x is going to be approximately equal to f prime of zero times x, and similarly for g. So these are both of the form, you know, y equals 5x, y equals 3x. By the way, for this discussion, we're going to assume that neither of these slopes is zero, just as in the picture. So where are we? Well, if you were to look in this very specific example at the limit of the ratio of the derivatives, well, a limit law applies because you could break this up into the quotient of the limits since we've assumed that the derivative functions themselves are continuous at the origin. It means that this limiting value is simply the ratio f prime of zero over g prime of zero. Meanwhile, if you looked at the ratio of the original functions and used our linear approximation for them, you would see that the ratio of the functions, at least when x is close to zero, should be approximately equal to that same ratio. Now, again, we didn't really prove anything. All we've really been able to show is that if the limit of the ratio of the original function exists, it should at least be approximately equal to the limiting value of the ratio of the derivatives. So th this is not a compelling, well, it's not a proof at all, but Hopefully, you'll be able to see why the limiting value of the original ratio of functions has some relationship to the limiting value of the ratio of the corresponding derivatives. So here's a tip. Suppose you're looking at a, an indeterminate form, and you apply L'Hopital's rule, and you discover that the new limit is also an indeterminate form. Well, you can apply L'Hopital's rule again. And if this is indeterminate as well, apply L'Hopital's rule again. And in fact, L'Hopital's rule may be iterated as long as you keep generating indeterminate forms. Now this leads us to a warning. When you have a new hammer, everything tends to look like a nail. What do we mean in this context? Don't use L'Hopital's rule when you don't have an indeterminate form. Let's look at this very simple example, limiting value as x approaches 0 of 1 over x. Now this is not an indeterminate form. The numerator does not go to 0. And of course the limit does not exist. If you simply graph the reciprocal function, you see that from the right as you approach 0, the limit diverges to infinity, whereas you, if you approach 0 from the left, the um, limit diverges to negative infinity. So this limit just doesn't exist. We know that. But if we blunder ahead with L'Hopital's rule, we obtain the limit of 0 over 1, and limit laws tell us that should be 0, and of course this is nonsense. So what happened here? We tried to swing the L'Hopital hammer, but we actually just broke this limit. So don't use L'Hopital's rule when it's not available to you. Let's revisit L'Hopital's rule. We're going to be able to make a couple of useful extensions. So first of all, as x approaches a, we will point out that actually you can either use a real number there or you can substitute infinity or negative infinity. So another way to look at this is you can apply L'Hopital's rule in the context of trying to, to find horizontal asymptotes. Also, we may apply L'Hopital's rule to one-sided limits. There's nothing stopping us from using L'Hopital's rule uh, as we approach the argument just from one side. So let's look at this example. We have here a rational function, a quotient of two quadratic polynomials, and we're attempting to evaluate the limit as x approaches infinity. So this is a horizontal asymptote question, really. And we're going to do this limit first using old school algebra and limit laws so we know what we're looking for when we apply L'Hopital's rule. So we could divide the numerator and the denominator by x squared, and we're going to get this expression here. And we'll notice that these three rational functions all have limiting value zero as x approaches infinity, and therefore the limiting value of the quotient is 3 halves. So we know what we're looking for when we apply L'Hopital's rule. 
First, let's double check to make sure we can apply L'Hopital's rule. Both numerator and denominator functions diverge to infinity as x goes to infinity, and that means we're dealing with a so-called infinity over infinity form. So we can apply L'Hopital's rule. We get yet another indeterminate form because both of these numerator and denominator functions diverge to infinity. So we can apply L'Hopital's rule again, and we get the constant function 6 quarters, whose limit as x goes to infinity is obviously 3 halves. L'Hopital's rule to the rescue. Now, that last example can be completely generalized. Here is a statement about the asymptotic behavior of general rational functions, and your exercise is to apply L'Hopital's rule to prove all of these statements.